And we, and we continue in the third chapter of Habakkuk. Our Lord, were you angry with the monsters of the deep? You attacked in your chariot and wiped them out. Your arrows were ready and obeyed your commands. You split the earth apart with rivers and streams. Mountains trembled at the sight of you. Rain poured from the clouds. Ocean waves roared and rose. The sun and moon stood still while your arrows and spears flashed like lightning. If you're furious, in your furious anger, you trampled on nations to rescue your people and save your chosen one. You crushed the nation, a nation's ruler and stripped his evil kingdom of its power. His troops had come like a storm, hoping to scatter us and glad to gobble us up. To them, we were refugees in hiding. But you smashed their heads with their own weapons. <clears throat> then your chariots churned the waters of the sea. When I heard this message, I felt weak from the fear, and my lips quivered. My bones seemed to melt, and I stumbled around. But I will patiently wait. Someday, those vicious enemies will be struck by, dis by disaster. Fig trees may no longer bloom, <coughs> or vineyards produce grapes. Olive trees may be fruitless, and harvest time's a failure. Sheep pens may be empty, and cattle stalls vacant. But I will still celebrate, because the Lord God is my Savior. The Lord gives me strength. He makes my feet as sure as those of deer and helps me to stand on the mountains. Prepare Ye Way is the title of this year's midweek Advent services. Each week we're going <clears> to <throat> dig into how we can draw closer to the purpose of celebrating Christ's coming for Christmas. The goal is to set ourselves right so we can embrace with our full bodies, our, our full hearts, our full minds, our full souls, and even into our skin, the moment when Christ comes. We start the series off, this midweek series, we start this off with pondering minds. Letting ourselves ask the questions that only God can answer. And when God gives those answers, we open ourselves up even more to what else might be there. It never seems to fail me by the time we get to Thanksgiving I am baffled at what is going on in the world. I am just at my wit's end with how I see people treating other people, how I see vehicles acting on the roads like nobody else is there. There is impatience and disrespect and anger and hurt that seem to just spiral out of everything. And it always seems right before Advent that I notice these things even more. And I never really understand why I notice them when I do. But it's almost like the week or two before Thanksgiving that I really notice this difference of people coming out of the woodwork. And then it hit me as I was preparing us for Advent why this is. Advent is this four week season of intense joy and crazy amount of insanity wrapped into a shiny gift wrapping bubble. 
we are full of excitement and we are decorating our houses and we are buying gifts for our loved ones and if you're my daughter you're excited for the gift wrapping and the cookie baking and seeing family you don't get to see all the time and then there's this but I still have to work I still have to pay bills I still have to do all the mundane things that we don't like to do going to the grocery store is now filled with even more people I can't run to Kohl's quick with and expect to get in and out in 10 minutes. And there's this different level of stress. And there's still that excitement. So yeah, Advent comes and we have this joy and we have this anxiety and God says, this season is a reset. Press the reset button and start your body again. Start your body from the inside out. Restart your mind. Restart your heart. Remember what you are doing and why you are doing it. And God says, let me take the wheel. This prayer that Habakkuk is writing the whole book of Habakkuk is actually one I never read before the narrative lectionary. So last Sunday in preparing was probably the first time I actually read the book. But it's a beautiful book of destruction and the craziness that goes on in life and his conversation with God. The back and forth of Habakkuk says this, God says that, and they go back and forth, and then we get to this beautiful prayer. In this prayer where Habakkuk is bringing out all the things that God has done, all the raging of the wars that are going on, and the reputation that God has for himself, and how Habakkuk's faith shines through all of it this beautiful underlining moment where Habakkuk says, you might have the world in total disarray, but you're my God and you're my, you're my safety and I got this through you. So I'm going to tell a little story. I went grocery shopping, which usually I like to do, but I did not enjoy going grocery shopping this week. I had too much on my plate and it was just something I had to do and I could not find enjoyment in it. And it was no wonder why when within like the first 10 minutes of being in the store, I was cut off by other carts trying to get down aisles about four or five times. So I'm already irritated because I don't want to be at the store. Now people are in my way, so I can't make it quick in the store. And I'm being cut off around every corner. All I kept saying to myself was, God, just get me out of here. Give me my things that I need to get and let me get out of here before something else happens. And then I turn down an aisle and here is this elderly woman. She was shaking and brittle and her cart was what was keeping her upright. Her cane was hanging out of her cart, and she was stuck. There was a can that was on the floor that got wedged in her wheels, and she couldn't move. So I was going to, I picked up the can and got out of the way, and this look on her face, this smile, the, the full-on eye smile that came from her, and in her frail little voice, she says, God bless you. Guess what? All the things that happened before that, they didn't matter anymore. They were out the window. It didn't matter. My purpose for going to the grocery store was this woman. And this woman stayed, has stayed on my mind since then. But leaving the grocery store, I was like, God, did you make all those things happen so I would be paying attention and notice this woman struggling. 
God, did you have this woman strung, struggle to get me out of my own irritations? God, did you have me down this aisle because it was the only thing of hope that was in this woman's life? The questions kept going and I kept wondering what was going on and what was God up to? That's exactly what God wants us to do to get our minds reset for Advent. Question what's going on around you and not just in the little aisle of the grocery store, but the big picture. Was I meant to go to the grocery store because that woman needed to see someone help? There was a lot of other people in the store. I couldn't have been the only one to go down that aisle. But was I meant to be the only person to stop for her that day? Was I the only one that she was supposed to give the message, God bless you to? During Advent, we get amped up in what is coming. God says, come back and stay focused in what is happening. Put forth the time to ask the questions. And when God gives you an answer, ask another question. Be curious. Though I am stumbling around me and unsure of what is happening, though the pains are all around me, I will celebrate in God. For God is my strength and my salvation. Prepare the way of the Lord and prepare our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits for the coming of Christ. Amen. Our evening hymn tonight is All Earth is Hopeful. We did this one a lot last year, so maybe it will sound familiar.